The EcoFlow power stream is a remarkable piece of technology. Who knew that it was possible to backfeed solar and battery power directly into your main circuit using a kind of plug and a socket? I had absolutely no idea you could do that. Anyway, EcoFlow have done it and the product works absolutely great. So no complaints about the product generally. But in this video, I'm gonna be looking at maybe some of the things that other reviewers are sort of not focusing on and maybe EcoFlow are not so keen for you to know. They're not necessarily bad things. They're just maybe limitations or things that you might not have thought about prior to buying the product. So yeah, I'm not trying to suggest you don't buy this product because it's beautifully made. It works really, really well. It's extremely good value and it is extremely useful for somebody who can't or maybe just doesn't want to get a full on sort of integrated solar system. For information, uh, I'm recording this using firmware version 1.0.0.138, which is the most current one at this time of recording, which is July 2023. First point I want to talk about is power demand and automation. And that's kind of a broad topic, really, for something like this. But I want first thing I want you to understand is how this works out of the box. So you have to set, you have to set a fixed amount of power that you decide to feed back into your main circuit. It does not adapt based on demand, which is kind of what I thought initially that it might do. Most houses will have a rough base load. So when I use the term base load here, I'm talking about the kind of amount of power that all your sort of 24 seven things use. So it might, you know, it might be like a, an internet router, um, might be some CCTV stuff, I don't know, um, whatever it is, that all, the, all that stuff added up, all your devices on standby, that's your base load. And if you want any sort of automation to flex what the power stream does when other things are used, well, that's what you're going to need EcoFlow smart plugs for. Without those, you are dependent on that base load staying pretty much exactly the same. Go higher than that base load, and you're going to be pulling energy from the grid again. Go lower, and if you've set your power stream to, say, 100 watts, go lower than 100 watts, and you'll just be dumping energy back into the grid. Now, for most people watching this video, I can imagine that that will be 100% wasted energy, because if you're anything like me, when I put too much energy back in, my smart meter actually has a negative figure on it, has the little symbol saying I'm put energy, putting energy back into the grid. But I don't think that's actually going to benefit me in any way. It is, It has just gone, that energy. So an obvious place, sort of speaking about this theoretically, an obvious place to put a smart plug would be a fridge, because if I look at my fridge, it uses 90 watts when it's on, and it uses pretty much zero power when it's turned off and it just constantly toggles between the two. I don't want to put 90 extra watts on my power stream setting because when the fridge turns off, I'm then going to be completely wasting that 90 watts unless there happens to be something else in the house that uses that amount of power at that exact time that the fridge is off. So yeah, of course, a smart plug makes perfect sense for this because it will automate the demand then. The problem is, I guess, when you think about it, there are quite a few things that fall into this category. There are quite a few things that you probably want to automate. And that's all right, I suppose, as long as the app can handle lots of smart plugs being attached. But I can think of like, you know, I can think of a computer, I can think of the TV maybe. Um, you know, I can think of some additional sort of CCTV stuff maybe, uh, some stuff in my room here where I'm recording. There's all sorts of things that I can suddenly come into mind to, that I would want to be able to automate that demand on. So I'm probably going to need sort of maybe four or five smart plugs, which means, well, normal smart plugs would be about four pound, but EcoFlow smart plugs are seven times that price. So they're not cheap. And smart plugs themselves use a bit of additional power. So if you've got four or five of those plugged in, you've kind of bumped your base load up probably by about five watts or something like that, which isn't much, I know, but it all adds up. So my point here, anyway, is that... I thought it would be a case of you set a maximum level that you want to allow back into your mains and it just flexes to accommodate the rest. Thinking about it, I realise why this probably wouldn't be possible. Uh, but I've got no doubt that there are probably some other people out there that think or thought the same as me. And I just want to sort of clear, clear that up that that's not how it works. And... Um, I don't know, maybe there is a way, another way of doing it. Maybe it is possible for it to flex on demand because I don't even think it was possible to backfeed your house in this way. Anyway, it still works great. Just 
if you want, just set it at 50 watts and you'll constantly shave 50 watts off your base load and just have it work like that all the time. You know, it, there's various ways you can use this and it works works brilliantly. But yeah, you probably will need the smart plugs if you want to do any kind of automation or get the best out of this. The power stream is a fanless design and for that I am extremely grateful. It has completely silenced the room that I had got used to being really quite noisy. The solar inputs, silent. The inverter out into the mains, silent. The whole unit is absolutely silent, pretty much. I'll go come back onto that in a second. As, as I say, the entire bottle, uh, body is metal construction, which most likely acts as a huge heat sink because it does get really quite warm. I'll throw a couple of pictures up here so you can get an idea of different temperatures. We've got one picture here feeding uh, AC rather than solar, so a fairly low AC power, maybe 100, 150 watts, something like that. Then I've got one here where I'm bringing in a reasonable amount of solar and I'm also putting quite a lot back into the grid as well, as well as some going back into a battery. And you can see on this one that everything is getting quite hot. We are up to 61 degrees Celsius on this, or 61 Celsius. So, I, I mean, it's designed to do this and it's not caused a problem so far. Yeah, it gets, if I want to be untechnical about it, I would say it is, you can put your hand on it for a few seconds before you really do want to take it off because it's too hot. Uh, but let's look at the, you know, looking at the images there, it is 61 degrees. And to me, that's in an ambient temperature of a, about 19, 20 degrees. So if you're in, an, in a climate that's uh, quite a bit warmer than that, you, might want to think about where you put this and how you actually sort of provide good airflow around this. If you were thinking about just shoving it in a corner and covering it over or in a cupboard somewhere, that's probably not going to be a good idea because it really does get quite hot if you've got quite a lot of power coming in of it, into it and going out of it. You can't use the solar or AC input on your Delta product, assuming you're using a Delta product with it, at the same time as using the power stream. Uh, it, it will work, but it messes up the MPPT controller and doesn't quite work in the, in the same way. So uh, effectively, if you, what, what I wanted to do, I wanted to be able to uh, plug my sort of main solar panels into the back of the power stream and then a couple of additional panels into the back of the Delta Max and get kind of the best of both, if you know what I mean. So you've got kind of like a bit of power going into the solar charging the battery there from that MPPT controller and then you've got the feed from the power stream going in and charging on the battery side but it doesn't work like that. What will happen is that the solar, if you decide to charge that way, the solar on the um, power stream, any solar coming into the power stream will only feed as much as the mains demand is. So if you say, you, if you say you've put your mains output, your AC out to 150 watts, and you get 400 watts coming in on solar, it'll just cap and stop at 150 watts. Even though you could have loads more, it'll just stop it. So you kind of have to get the perfect setup for it to be worthwhile. Realistically, it's just not worth messing around. And uh, as soon as you pull the solar out or you pull the AC power out, it, then the solar bumps up and it starts bringing it back through. You lose a battery input. So there's no way to chain input. So my, I've got a spare battery here. Well, sorry, I've got two spare batteries, but one of them now is just completely useless because I've had to use that input. Now, again, it's not, I'm not really complaining about this. It's just that oh, I've got nothing I can really do with that now. But it would be nice if I could somehow chain the devices together or, or I don't know. I, could, I can, of course, switch the battery around and I can charge one and once one's at 100%, I can take it out and then if I need the extra power, I can plug it back in and switch the XT150 cables. That's the big, big fat one that comes with the spare battery. But I don't want to... The whole point of this system is that it's really nice and simple and you can just have it running. Um, I don't really want to be messing around with the cables and connectors in that way all the time. The actual output from the power stream into the battery is only 600 watts. So let's say you have 800 watts coming in on solar, totally possible, and you have your mains demand set at 100 watts because that's all you need. You will have 100 watts going to waste because you cannot output 700 watts into the battery to charge it. And that to me seems crazy because the device is 800 watts and I understand, I mean, the XT150 cables and the, the spare batteries, I mean, those things can handle like 
two, three kilowatts going into them. They, they can handle crazy power, so it's not an issue there. But it just seems mad that they haven't made it the same, so made it 800 watts, so that the 800 watt solar can then feed 800 watts into the battery if you want it to, but it can't. Don't know why. The solar, remember, is two times 400 watts, or two, maybe 500 watts, whatever, but, but it's the 800 watt is two photovoltaic inputs, each of them 55 volts, and they're 400 watts each. So it doesn't really matter, and it's, you can work around it. For me, it was a limitation immediately. Um, initially, I had to rerun a second set of cables because I was way over voltage. Uh, so you have to think about that. It's worth just being absolutely certain that that's how it's how it's set up because you might want to rethink how you've got your solar panel set up, you know, what's in parallel, what's in series, to make sure you don't go over that 55 volts on each of the solar inputs. The Delta Max battery cable, the one that goes from the power stream into the battery to charge it and goes into your Delta Max, is stupidly short. Uh, they kind of have designed this so that you have the power stream sat on top of the unit. And that's fine if that's what you want to do, but I don't. So please, can I just have like a meter of cable or something? Uh, the cable's like about this long. There's, there's nothing to it. It's like crazy short. So consider that where with where you're going to put your batteries. EcoFlow know how to sell batteries. Yeah, that's their job, isn't it? But what do I mean by this? Well, this is promoted as a product that you might want to use with a single Delta Max battery or something similar to that. But once you power anything for long periods of time, you start to realize how much power they actually use. So if you look at the base load of a house, I'm pretty sure that most of you out there probably haven't got a base load that's much less than kind of 60, 70 watts or something, because even just like a you know internet router and a few things on standby is going to take probably 20 watts or 30 watts, never mind anything additional like smart plugs and things like that. But you, yeah, you realize that you simply, with a two kilowatt battery you really can't power that much for that long so if you're expecting to be able to use just a single battery you just won't be able to so of course you, your battery is going to be dead more often than anything else of course it doesn't matter you can just use charge as much as you can and use as much as you can and just be done with it but if you want to have that sort of off-grid element to it where you're not dependent on the grid then you're going to need more power and you will soon realize that then you'll realize that actually, you know, even two batteries isn't enough. I kind of found after I did all this stuff with extension cables pr prior to getting the power stream, I'm so happy that that thing has completely cleared up the need to have extension cables running around the house to power various bits and pieces. But I kind of found that with my use, six kilowatts was just about right. So, so two spare batteries in the Delta Max, so six kilowatts power, six kilowatt of power, with, with, and that's with the summer sun. But um, yeah, you'll, you'll soon realize that you need more batteries and you'll be wanting more batteries. And of course they have to be EcoFlow batteries because you want it all to fit into the system, don't you? So you can't just start powering random bits and pieces. Of course you can charge something late, later at night from another battery and stuff, but really it's much, much easier to have a spare battery and have sort of two EcoFlow batteries. You get what I'm saying. They, they know what they're doing here. And I kind of feel like 320, 330 pounds for the unit is really, really reasonable. But I do also feel that maybe they've just they've priced it at that because they know that people will be then buying their flat cables. They will be buying extra spare batteries. They will be buying bigger um, power stations from them and all the additional accessories that you want. And they'll be buying them from EcoFlow. Very clever. Good strategy. This is not a solution for a power outage. EcoFlow make this absolutely clear. It's not, they're not hiding it at all. But just in case you didn't notice and you didn't read that particular bit, it doesn't work. It needs mains coming in for it to actually be able to provide mains back into the circuit. So it is not an, um, a blackout solution. Of course, you've still got your battery there, assuming it's actually got any power in it. You've still got your battery there for that. And you can turn on your mains inverter on your battery and you can start powering things that way. But this itself, the power stream, is not a uh, blackout solution. Despite what I've seen on other videos on YouTube, you can't plug this directly into another smart battery. Now, you can charge that uh, second, that spare battery, that smart battery 
from solar. So let's say I connected the power stream just directly to that, no delta max at all, just into the spare battery. The solar power will happily come into the power stream and it will charge that battery. But the actual mains outside of it, the actual bit that this is all about, the back feed, doesn't work. It's unreliable and it kind of turns on, then it turns off, then it turns on. At least it does at current firmware. Whether that's something they can fix, I don't know. But I imagine there's some additional control stuff, <laughs> for want of a better term, <laughs> control circuitry going on on the Delta Max that allows this to regulate itself. So whatever you've seen on other videos, I've tested it here and it does not work. EcoFlow have set this at a very fair price. As I say, yeah, it might be because they know that this is an incredibly sticky product. It really gets you into their ecosystem, really gets you... I mean, you the, the app is absolutely fantastic with this. The information, the statistics, the graphs, it is absolute paradise as far as I'm concerned. I love this sort of stuff. Yeah, it's probably, since I got it, it's probably my most used app on my phone. So um, they've done a great job of it, and it's a fair price because I think they know people will be buying other stuff from EcoFlow to go with this. So congratulations, EcoFlow, you've done a good job. So any questions you got, anyway, please put them in the uh, video comments as normal. And this is accurate, at least at time of recording. It may well change. I think they've released like three or four firmwares so far already. So... Things will change, things will get fixed, things will undoubtedly improve. But hope that was useful for you. If it was, give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you.